Hey guys, Dev here. Stick around to the end of the video because I have some announcements to make, if you don't mind. I'm sure at this point, everyone knows who George Floyd is. Very quickly, in case you don't, on May 25th, 2020, George Floyd was killed by Derek Chauvin, a Minneapolis police officer. During Floyd's arrest, Chauvin put his knee on Floyd's neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds. A video of the killing went viral, and in it, if you have the stomach to do so, you can actually watch George Floyd die. The Minneapolis Police Department's first move was to cover it up, as most American PDs do, generally. Here's a statement regarding the official autopsy. The autopsy revealed no physical findings that support a diagnosis of traumatic asphyxia or strangulation. Mr. Floyd had underlying health conditions, including coronary artery disease and hypertensive heart disease. The combined effects of Mr. Floyd being restrained by the police, his underlying health conditions, and any potential intoxicants in his system likely contributed to his death. This was the police department's attempt to basically wave away the blame, and it was quickly dropped, especially when a second coroner's opinion came out. Cause of death cardiopulmonary arrest complicating law enforcement subdual, restraint and neck compression, manner of death, homicide, how injury occurred, decedent experienced a cardiopulmonary arrest while being restrained by law enforcement officers, other significant conditions, artiosclerotic and hypertensive heart disease, fentanyl intoxication, recent methamphetamine use. I recall a few weeks ago, the common consensus was that the American people were being gaslit by the Minneapolis Police Department, as well as those media outlets that were publishing their propaganda, as w which said stuff like, any potential toxicants in his system likely contributed to his death. But it turns out, no, he had actually recently used meth. And man, it always ends up being this way, doesn't it? How many times have we seen now where a police officer kills somebody? Usually, but not always a black person. The community is outraged. There's peaceful protests. There's riots. But then, as the wheels of justice continue to move, they discover that the victim was not just an innocent boy going to college, but he may have actually done something wrong. So, let's examine the possibility. Does George Floyd fall into that category? According to court records in Houston, which is where George Floyd used to live, he was arrested seven times. Drug possession in 1997, two counts of theft in 1998. Failure to identify, which you have to do as a fugitive, obviously, in 2001. Drug possession, 2002. Trespass in 2003. Drug possession, 2004. Possession, 2005. Aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon, 2007. That last charge is the most interesting. Here's the story. George Floyd and five other people arrived at the house of Araceli Henriquez and Angel Negrete, as well as their young toddler. One of them, it's not clear if it was George Floyd or somebody else, was dressed in a blue uniform and said they were with the water department. When Henriquez opened the door, the man forced himself into the house. At the same time, five other men arrived in a black Ford Explorer. The largest of the six, presumably George Floyd because George Floyd is 6'7", placed a pistol against Henrique's abdomen and forced her into the living room area of the residence. This large suspect proceeded to search the residence while another armed suspect guarded Henrique's, who was struck in the head after she tried to scream for help. As the six suspects looked through the residence, they demanded to know where drugs and money were, and Henriquez told them there was no such things in the residence. The suspects then took some jewelry along with a cell phone before they fled the scene in their Black Ford Explorer. Three months later, the Black Ford Explorer was found, and George Floyd was the driver. George Floyd pled guilty in 2009. He was sentenced to five years in prison, and he got out on parole in 2013. After getting out of jail, George Floyd turned his life around, at least for a little bit, Multiple articles have been written about the subject. After jail, he moved to Minneapolis, hoping to start a new life. He left at least one child behind in order to do so, but fine, he moves on with his life. He gets married. He has more kids. He becomes a mentor of other young people in his community. He works with his church. He helped his mother exercise and recuperate after she had a stroke. He worked as a truck driver, a bouncer, and a security guard. A few months before his death, he lost his job as the bouncer of a bar because of the whole coronavirus thing and he in fact contracted coronavirus himself and later recovered. George Floyd's crime was trying to pass off a counterfeit $20 bill at a Cup Foods location. According to an interview with the owner of that Cup Foods location on The Cut, the owner knew Floyd, calling him a big teddy bear who would come to the location a few times a week to pay his cell phone bill, and said that they always got along. 
However, the owner wasn't there that night. Other employees were. And according to testimony from those two employees published on the Washington Post, when they realized that George Floyd had used a counterfeit 20 to buy cigarettes and that he was still sitting in his vehicle across the street, they went to confront him. Not only did Floyd refuse to return the cigarettes, he apparently seemed awfully drunk and not in control of himself. When the police finally arrived, George Floyd struggled with them as they pulled him out of his car. And although he was quite calm while sitting on the street talking to the officers, when they decided to put him in their police car, he again resisted, which is what led to the 8 minutes and 46 seconds. So, we're talking about a man who has an extensive criminal history. Who seems to have tried multiple times to turn his life around, doing legitimate good in the process, but who continued to commit petty theft and various other minor crimes up until his death at the hands of the police officers. George Floyd wasn't a saint, despite the deification he's currently receiving by a lot of progressives right now. But I want to make it absolutely clear. It doesn't matter what George Floyd's crimes actually were. He should not have been killed in the street. This guy could have been a serial killer. He could have been a child molester. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what his crimes were, whether large or small, because now he will never be brought to justice for them. Unless a suspect is actively resisting arrest, like if he has a gun and he was pointing at a police officer and the cop had to shoot him or be shot and then the suspect got killed, it's regrettable, but fine. That's not this case. There were four officers there. They had him arrested. They had him restrained. There were other things they could have done aside from fucking murder him. Regardless of his crimes, what should have happened to George Floyd was that he be detained, read his rights, arrested, brought in, provided legal counsel, and be allowed to live to see his day in court. And the fact that he is dead at the hands of the police is a miscarriage of justice. George Floyd may not have been innocent, but he certainly didn't deserve to die. Whew, that was, uh, that was a rough video to make. And actually, based on the script that I had written and the amount of evidence that I had up, I actually thought it'd be longer than that, so... Hope you don't mind me filling out the rest of the video with um, an announcement. I know that I've been away from the SFO channel for a while. The political videos have been uh, have been kind of dry for the past two weeks, but I'm now back to doing it. Um, the story as to why I was gone is probably just pretty boring to you guys. Um, if you've heard me talk on Discord or, or on my gaming stream or whatever, you've probably heard it already. But basically, it was it was a combination of being completely inundated with almost too much information you know when you have hundreds of links or thousands of links and they have to be like cataloged and then turned into a workable script you get a lot of projects that end up being started but not finished and that has been a consistent problem with my workflow i have you know three or four videos related to the current riot situation but every day there's like there's more sources there's more news and the videos become too big you know and I, I basically need to get a handle on actually nailing something down and getting it out and basically putting my own perfectionism aside. And I know that I've talked about this before and so have other creators, but the worst part about it is that when you skip a few days trying to make the video good, there's like pressure on you to make an even better video, which then leads to more time, which then leads to more time before the video comes out, which then leads to it even being later. And it becomes this snowballing nightmare of, you know, me being gone for two weeks and organizing a dozen video topics and not actually doing any of them. So basically, my, my solution to this was to just be like, you know what, fuck it. I'm doing a small video just to talk about something, just to get myself back in front of the mic again. And then that wipes out one topic and basically gets me started again. So this tiny video will hopefully lead to more videos in the coming days. This probably just sounds dumb to you and I would completely understand it if you viewed it that way. Because frankly, it sounds kind of dumb to me. But basically, sometimes things get away from me. And I don't want to put out a lackluster product, so I just keep working at stuff, and then it, could, it just turns into a giant nightmare. And uh, ironically enough, the solution seems to be doing something that I hate to do, which is put out a short video that is hyper-focused on one thing. In this case, it was just George Floyd's record. And allowing that to snowball me in a positive direction instead of a negative one. In any case, I've got an announcement to make. I now have a P.O. box. People have been asking uh, for a while now, Hey, Dev, uh, where or how can I mail you things? And, you know, for a while I actually had um, my, my address up on a video. I've now since taken down the video. Um, ever since my local Antifa uh, goons have been trying to find out where I live, I said, you know what, 
Maybe I should take down that video that has my address in it. But basically, I now have a P.O. box. If you want to mail me stuff, you can do so at the address on the screen. I'll check it probably once a week or once every two weeks or something. I don't expect to be flooded with mail or anything. But if you want to mail me something and you want me to unbox it on the weekly sip, I can do that. If you want me to just have something that you, for some reason, really just want me to have, that's fine. If you want to send me uh, games to play on Game Boomers, sure. If it's like a physical game, I'll put it at the... Uh, at the start of the pile for us to uh, play new games with. Maybe books that I can read or do reviews of. I'm, I'm down with that too. Uh, please don't mail me poison or glitter bombs or, or other bad things, okay? I'd rather not die. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's an unreasonable request, but basically uh, don't, don't mail me stuff that's, you know, that'll be a big mess or that'll actually be damaging to me or somebody or, or that'll get me like, I don't know, Put on a watch list. I'm not sure, but basically, don't don't uh, don't do that, okay? If you don't mind. So, thanks very much for continuing to support me and uh, and sticking with me. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which will hopefully be tomorrow, and hopefully it'll be a lot longer than this one. All right, I'm out of here. I love you.